Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight wanting to do your will, wanting to honor and glorify your name, wanting to take this passage of Scripture and learn from it, Father. We pray, Father, that you'll meet with us, open our minds and our hearts, and Father, help us to make decisions that will be good for the kingdom work here on this earth. I pray this in the sweet, blessed, precious, holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I chose to title this lesson Crossroads. I, I came to a crossroad. I knew the passage of Scripture that God wanted me to teach on. I love Colossians 2. I, I really would love to teach on Colossians 2, but he wouldn't let me teach on Colossians 2. He said, do 3. And I said, okay. But then I didn't know how to end it. I, I, have, I thought, well, I can, I, can do, I can go this way and end it and be, be liked by everybody. Or I can go this way and end it and they run me out of the church. <laughs> so, so what I did was I, I kept praying. I kept asking God, which, which way, Father? Which way? And he, he finally told me this morning about 2 o'clock. So that's what I'm going to preach tonight. <clears throat> and lucky for you, it's the kind that's the easy kind. It's not the hard one. <clears throat> I, I presented my notes to Carrie, and, and Carrie does the, the, the bulletin thing, and, and she dressed it all up, and I called it a fork in the road. Well, she came up with some real cute ideas about a fork in the road. We have this road going down the, and two paths and a big fork right in the middle of it. And I thought, well, maybe a little more classy than that, but... I will be in Colossians 3 tonight. If you, if you want to take some time to look for Colossians chapter 3, you're welcome to do that. I want to talk to you or tell you a poem by Robert Frost. It goes like this. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood... And looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves, no step had trodden back. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I would e'er come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere, ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. You see, we have a choice in life. All of us have a choice in life. We can choose God in His way, or we don't have to choose God in His way. I'm, I'm reminded... Was anybody here for the, for the play, the, the Heaven's Gates and, and Hell's Flames? Was anybody here for that? Yeah. Do you remember one of the last scenes that comes to my mind? I, one of the last scenes, this old devil comes out of this, this fiery pit. And he stands here on the stage. 
And he looks at all of us and he says, Now remember, had that rough voice, you chose me. I didn't choose you. You chose me. And how sad that is. How sad that is. So, so I'm going to read to you tonight from Colossians chapter number 3. Follow along with me. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It's another strange thing God has me doing. Normally I'm an NIV man myself. Love the NIV. But tonight he says use this one. I said okay. Here we go. Verse 1. If then you have been raised with Christ... Seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. I don't know how you all read the Bible None of my business, I guess. But I like to read the Bible in paragraphs. You know, sometimes your Bibles are, are divided into paragraphs. And, and I like to stop at a paragraph and think, what did I just read? And, and so I like to teach on this just for a minute. It, the, the Bible says, if then you have been raised with Christ, a, a better translation would be, since you have been raised with Christ. That's what the NIV says, but... A lot of Bibles say if then, so it's, it's not, a, it's not a, a, a confrontational thing. It's saying, it says because this has happened, then this is going to happen. Back in chapter 2, it says we were buried with him in baptism and we were raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God. And so, so we have been raised with Christ, the Bible says. When I watch... Dr. Stanton, or Randy, or, or, or whomever, uh, uh, Jesse, whenever they, they baptize someone, they, they lower them in the water, buried in, in, light, in likeness of his death, raised in likeness of his resurrection. I try to tell people that, that baptism is an outward sign of an inward commitment. You're, you're, you're showing the world that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you're, and you're willing to get up there and <laughs> especially the ladies, they, they, they have this, their beautiful hairdo and their makeup's all fixed up and boy, they're all prettied up. And then Todd dunks them out of the water. <clears throat> But Todd, I, I do it a little different. When I dunk them under the water and I bring them back up, I say, now wait, stand here just a minute. I said, God wants us to leave here as salt and light in the community. So I take a little flask of salt. I have them dip their tongue, the finger in the salt and touch it to their mouth. And then I have a lit candle and I light their candle and I said, now go and be salt and light in this world. The ladies just hate me for doing that. <clears throat> but we're, we're buried with Christ. We're raised again. And so the first blank, I think, is if, 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 if you've been raised with Christ, then seek the things that are above. And then it says, set your minds on things above, not on things of the earth. Oh, how I think we miss this so much. How I think we miss this so much. We are so earthly minded. And that's sad. Because God wants us to think about future things. I've often said this in my Sunday school class, and, and I'll say it here tonight. 
I have never once seen a hearse pull on a U-Haul. You can't take it with you. And so you better figure out what is important in this life and strive toward that instead of these earthly things. Oh, my Lord, please. And then it says, for you have died and your, your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ is your, your life appears, you'll also appear with him in glory. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Dale, there's, there's an old song. I, you're probably too young to remember it. But it goes something like this. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Oh, the angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. You know, that's the way everybody should look at it. This is a temporary place. And we think so much of earthly things. Sometimes I think we're no heavenly good. Let's move on. I'm, 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 next paragraph. Verse 5. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. Now, there's a, there's a colon there, which means Paul's going to take off in this letter and list a bunch of things. So listen to me as I read the list. Sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And it says, on account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you two were once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away. Another colon, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is no Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. End of paragraph. It clearly says... Put off your old self. Is that what it says? Put off your old self? The old sinful nature? And put on, put on this new self that God gives you. But I'm afraid church members all over, not just BOHBC, But I'm afraid churches all over the United States have people in them who talk a good game, but they don't do what they say. Oh, we love to, we love to talk our, our Christianese. We love to come to church on Sunday and, and act like good people. We love... <laughs> We love to, to put a good foot forward, in other words. Well, what happens on Monday? What happens on Tuesday? What happens on Wednesday? By the way, while I've got to here on Wednesday, there's some awfully good food here on Wednesday night. See, I thought you thought I was going to be something religious, didn't you? There's some awfully good food here on Wednesday night, and it only costs five bucks. So come and get you some good food. And then stay for the service because that man unpacks the gospel as good as anybody I've ever heard in my life. He really knows how. He can take a simple healing of, of a blind man and stretch it into a 45-minute sermon. I like that. I like that. 
I told some of my friends, I was inviting them to the church tonight because I get to stand up here and run my mouth for a few minutes. I said, I promise I will let you, I'll get you out of here early. You'll be out by 1130, no problem. And they didn't show up, by the way. So Wednesday night, but, but you know what? Here's the sad thing. We'll have five or six hundred in here on Sunday morning. We might have 150, 200 here on tonight. And I understand why, but, but on Wednesday night, we have such a low turnout. And God's Word is being taught. This book is opened up and explained to us, and, and it helps us. And we don't show up and get it. My wife and I were talking on the way over here tonight. Uh, she said something about, you know, lots of churches don't even have service on Sunday night. And that's true. In my opinion, shame on them. When, 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 I, when I grew up at North Knoxville Baptist Church, there was no option about when you went to church. You went to church on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. And there was no if about it, you was going to go to church. I tell people, I went to church nine months before I was born. And yet, churches all over Knoxville are ceasing to have Sunday night services. Well, you might say, well, now, Brother Anthony, give, give them a break. They're having these small groups. Fine. I'm all for small groups. I'm a small groups guy. I love them. But you know what? Small groups doesn't take the place of a church service on Wednesday night with a preacher standing up and, and expounding on God's word. That doesn't, I mean, it's just, this is the kind of fellowship we need. Stories told one time of a young preacher who just came into the community and he was concerned about members that on rolling not showing up. Kind of reminds me about my job. I, I've got a list on my desk several pages long of members who are on roll but they don't show up. So anyway, this young pastor goes and he wants to visit some people and he, he goes to this older gentleman's house and knocks on the door it's winter time. He can tell there's somebody there because there's fire coming out of the fireplace, other smoke. And so he walks in, he introduces himself to the man. And he says, I'm the new pastor of the church. And he says, I just want to let you know I've been missing you at church. I, I, I need to see you at church. And the old man gives several excuses, several reasons why he didn't come. Well, as the, as the young pastor was listening, he, he stands up and he gets the, the tools by the, by the grate and he picks up a coal and he sets it over by itself. And you know what happens to a coal that sits over by itself, don't you? It starts getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And they sat there and looked at that coal for a while and knew what I'm saying anything. And then the young pastor gets up, takes the tongs, and he picks the coal up and puts it back in the fire. And it brighter and gets brighter and brighter. The young pastor says, Mr. So and so, we're missing you in church. And you need to be there. He said, Thank you for your time. And he left. The next Sunday morning, the man was back in church. The lesson is, if we're not going to meet together, if we're not going to share each other's burdens, if we're not going to be, be, be friendly and, and helpful to each other, we soon start ebbing away. We had several cards filled out during the, the play, uh, Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames. Lots of those cards 
they, they said, we accepted Jesus as our personal Savior. Hallelujah. Lots of those cards marked on them, we want to be baptized. Hallelujah. But call them and try to arrange for them to come to be baptized... And you'd think I was insulting people. You, you'd think, you'd think, why would they mark it on the card? Why would they accept Jesus as their Savior and then, and then, and then not come to be baptized? And I think to myself, it must be my phone voice. Or maybe, maybe, maybe I didn't use enough deodorant that day or something, but, but it's, it's a bit discouraging. But, but Lindsay and Carrie and the staff, they, they encourage me. They say, keep on keeping on. I just don't get it. So I'm afraid the church nowadays is talking a good game, but they're not walking the good game. What we need in church today is a lot more walkie-talkies. We don't need just talkie-talkie. We need walkie-talkies. So let's, let's get busy and do some walkie-talkie. I, I told you I wasn't going to go there, but, I, but anyway. Let's look at the next paragraph. So you're supposed to put off the old self, put on the new self. Now, verse 12, put on then... As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. And here's the list. This is a good list. Compassion. Compassionate hearts. Kindness. Humility. Meekness and patience. Bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So you must also forgive. And above all these, put on Love. And above all of these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Didn't you enjoy the, the, the special tonight, the, the soloist? That, didn't Jeff do a good job? I'm, I'm telling you, buddy, that he has a beautiful voice. I, I heard him practicing, and he heard, I heard this, and I think, man, I wish I could do as good as he's doing. I thought once he was going to walk off stage, but he didn't. He stayed right there. So far, I've only been tempted to walk off stage three or four times since I've been here. So, <clears throat> perfect harmony, the Bible says. Love has perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of, word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thanksgiving and thank, thanks, thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed... Do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to close here in just a minute. When I, when I preach on Sunday, I preach in an assisted living facility in Oak Ridge. They've just had lunch. The average age up there is 90. And you know what? Someone who's had lunch and is age 90, what they do when they hear a preacher preach? So it doesn't bother me one little bit if your eyes are closed. <laughs> Over the years, as a minister, I've been asked to... Weddings, to officiate at weddings. 
And I love, I love officiating at weddings. I really do. You know my favorite part of the wedding? You don't even care, do you? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to move on. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. When, 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 the, when the bride makes her entrance, you know the bride, they come in and they start playing whatever kind of song it is they play. And everybody turns and looks at the bride. I watch the groom. I see his face. He's looking at his beautiful bride coming down. And I think, my goodness. He's so excited. Love's a beautiful thing. And, and as, a, as, a, as a pastor, I've already counseled with them. I've talked with them. I've tried to tell them all the good things about marriage. I've given them some warnings. And usually I use a very familiar passage to everyone in this room. It's called the love chapter. The love chapter. Anybody know what chapter that is? 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13. You know, I, and I've used that in, in numerous weddings. And I thought, man, this, this was put in here just for, just so we can have a good ceremony at a wedding. And God woke me up one day. He said, no, dummy, I didn't put it in there just for that. God talks to me that way sometimes because we are really good friends. Real good friends. And I hope you are. But, but, but here, here's, here's, here's what God said to me. He said, Anthony, in that passage is the perfect definition of love. And you need to use it in whatever you do all day long, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And here is the passage. This is the definition of love. Verse 4, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love Bears all things, hopes all things, endures all things. That's a definition of love. And I ask myself, if, if I've put off all the old nature, all this old sinful nature that I'm supposed to have put off, why am I not acting like this? Why, why do I get angry? Why, why do I get upset? Why, why do I worry about things? I've had several people ask me, are you, are you worried about tonight? No. Because I'm probably going to get one chance to do this, so I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> so, so but, but, but God says... If, 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 you, if you really want to put off the old self and put on the new self, then get on this program of love and perfect harmony. Quit acting like the world. The world will swallow you up. Let me see. <clears throat> Let me ask you a question. You can answer out loud. What show... Does Pat Sajak, what, what show is he in? Wheel of Fortune. Okay. What show is uh, Steve Harvey? Who what show is he part of? Family Feud. What show is Gibbs and Tony DeNoso? What are he part of? <laughs> Do 
And the only reason I know you're giving the right answers is because I watch all those shows. <laughs> but you know what? I'd a whole lot spend my time, a lot better spend my time if I was in this word than in those shows. How, how are you going to be friends with God if you don't know what he says? How are you going to be good friends with God if you never pick up his word and read it? How are you going to be friends with God if you never pray and talk to him and beg him and cry with him? How are you going, how are you going to do that? I've, I've got some good friends. I'm a very fortunate man. I have good friends. I could call any of these friends anytime and they would come help me. Guess what? God does the same thing. I call on him any time. He'll come help me. He loves me. So I'm asking you tonight, church. Do we do too much talking and not enough walking? Are we the kind of church that it's just like a social club and people come together and they, 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 they have friends, they pat each other on the back and then go their own merry way. God help us if we are. So I'm going to, I'm going to offer an invitation. By the way, uh, this, this was mentioned on one Wednesday night here at our church. The pastor, Dr. Todd Stanett, was up preaching, and he asked a question. He says, do you know what the first sermon that Jesus Christ ever preached? Do you know what it was? Yeah, that's the kind of response he got. <laughs> well, the answer, is, it's the, the answer is repent. That's the first sermon he preached. He said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. We don't talk enough about that. In other words, to repent, we have to admit we've done something wrong. And heaven forbid we admit anything wrong. Well, I'm, I'm the first to tell you, I need repentance as bad as anybody in this room. So here, here's, here's my invitation to you tonight. And by the way, I am closing with this. I don't know what time it is, but I don't even care. <laughs> Invitation number one. If you do not know Jesus as your personal Savior, if you have not had a, a relationship with Jesus, if you've never asked him to come in your heart and be part of your life, if you've never accepted what he's done for you, the free gift that he's given you, I want you to come down here. And one of us will take God's word, we'll show you from God's word how you can be saved. We'll pray with you. And your life will be changed. Did I say your life will be a bed of roses? No, I didn't. But I've seen your life will be changed. You'll have, a, you'll have a new outlook on life. You'll have a forever friend. Invitation number two. You may be part of the talkie-talkie crowd. Don't you want to be part of the walkie-talkie? Don't you want to change your, your way? Don't you want to live the Christian life seven days a week, 24 hours a day? Don't you want to let people know that you love Jesus? Yes, you should. And you're not doing that. Then I say, come down here and repent. Repent. You said, well, Brother Anthony, I can do that in my seat. Yeah, you can. But you know what? <laughs> God says, I, I love it when you come down and you show people that there's a change. You show people that there's, you've made a decision. They don't have to know what you're down here for. You don't have to stand there and, and list all your sins. I heard a pastor one time say, if you expect me to list all my sins, you're crazy. I'm not going to do it. 
And I agree with him. I'm not going to list all mine either. But I'll tell you what, God wants you to repent. And, and the, last, the last invitation, if, if you're not a member of this fine church, this wonderful group of believers, I invite you to come down and, and change that. You can be a member. You can join. You can have, move a letter from another church. You can have, by statement of faith, we'll accept you lots of ways. If you need to be baptized, one of these guys will put you under the water. So the invitation is for you all. Three choices. Be saved, repent, or join the church. Or if you just want to come down and pray, that'd be fine too. But I I wish I'd I'd done this. I I meant to do it and didn't do it. I, I was going to get a tennis ball and a racket, and I was going to bounce it on the floor and hit it. Boom. And now, the ball is in your court. Remember what the devil said? I didn't choose you. You chose me. Who are you going to choose tonight? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time we've had together. I pray that your name has been glorified, Father. I pray that the invitation is very clear. I pray that people will respond to this invitation. Father, we love you and we need you so badly. Help us to be walkie-talkie Christians instead of just talkie-talkie. Help us to put on love in everything that we do. Oh, God, how much better Christians we would be if we could just exemplify love in our lives. God, please help us. This is your time, Father. I pray this in the sweet, blessed, precious, holy name of Jesus. Amen. Come down front, if you will, please, if you make a decision.